Good morning, Oakland Baptist. Let's try that one more time. That wasn't like collective like normal. Good morning, Oakland Baptist. There we go. Uh, I got a handful of announcements for you this morning. Um, I'm going to try and not uh, get Bobby Gale's hands uh, smoking this morning. I'm trying to slow down and talk a little slower. Um, First announcement that I have for you, uh, I have seemed to not know where the covers for this cord up front are, so if you do happen to walk up front in front of the middle pew, there's a cord on the ground, please don't trip. Just as a heads up to our ushers and our deacons, there is a cord right there. Um, But the rest of your stuff will be in the bulletin. Um, The first thing, if you are helping volunteer with VBS, uh, we're going to have a meeting today right after service down in the fellowship hall. So if you could just make your way down there, we're going to just answer any last-minute questions as we head into that uh, coming up next week. Um, Our Wednesday evening services are going to look uh, completely normal this week. Um, No, that's a lie. They're not going to look normal this week. Um, Make sure I get my dates right. Yeah. Uh, Prayer meeting will start at 615 with the Bible study starting at 645. uh, Pastor Lee is going to be looking at what we believe about the ordinances I believe it's Article 8 out of the Baptist Faith and Message. Uh, The students, we're going to start promptly at 615 here. And if you have been a part of Awana this year, you're going to be uh, joining the Holtz at their house for a pool party, Sean, at 530. So it starts at 530, so you can drop them off on your way to church. And then it's over at 730, so you can swing by after uh, to pick them up. So if you've been a part of Awana, uh, go enjoy that. Have a great time out there. Our baby bottle blessing uh, is coming to a close. We're collecting change cash checks for the Tri-City Pregnancy Center. Um, From Mother's Day to Father's Day, if you didn't know this, here's your reminder. Father's Day is next week. Um, So if you have one of those bottles out, please make sure those are returned and filled uh, so that that Jerry Farkas can get the, I don't remember who was doing it, so that Jerry Farkas can get those to where they need to be going. Um, next Sunday on Father's Day, our WMU is going to be cooking breakfast for our fathers to celebrate Father's Day. Um, this is the only week that we put this out because we thought we would need numbers. Can you, if you could do us a huge favor and sign up on your way out the door, there's a sign-up sheet on the white table just so we can get an idea of numbers. If you leave and you do not sign up, if you could call either Leslie, myself, or Pastor Lee to inform us of if you're coming or not so that we can prepare enough food for that. Uh, that'll be at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. Yeah, next Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Our, our grief share is going to have a coffee, their coffee chat on Tuesday, June 21st at 10.30 a.m. in the uh, Oakland Fellowship Hall. Um, that, again, that's not just um, for widows. That's open for anybody who's dealing with some type of grief or working through some, um, some of those emotions. Um, we'd love to have you there. It's a good time of just fellowship and, and community with each other, um, and we'd love to see you. Uh, students, uh, we do have Sunday Night Get Right tonight from 5 to 6.30, so you are more, uh, more than welcome and invited to come out to that. I believe that's all of the announcements that I have for you this morning. So if you would, yes. Quiet. So all of you guys who like shy the mic away when you have to come up here, she's talking to you. <laughs> But if you would, stand with us as we go to uh, the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to come before you this morning and thank you that we can gather together as brothers and sisters to worship. So, Father, as we go to begin this time of worship through prayer, through song, through communion, and through the teaching of your word, Father, I would just ask that every action that comes from us today is worship every thought that we have is worship that the very breath we breathe we are breathing in response to who you are father we thank you that you love us enough to bring us here this morning we thank you that you love us enough to bring us from death to life so father we thank you for that and i ask that you guide us in this service this morning in your son's holy name we pray amen If you would, take a minute to greet those around you.
righty, if you would, come back together, come back to your seats, and we're going to continue in worship. as we sing all three verses of Before the Throne of God Above. Satisfied 
with Christ my Savior and my God. Amen. At this time, uh, you may be seated, um, and we're going to hear from Miss Jean and Mr. Jason. I think it's appropriate to share something right now rather than later. At the end of August of this year, Vern Farkas and I will no longer be serving on the deacon board. Uh, our time is up. Doesn't mean we stop being deacons. We're still deacons. Uh, the board has already decided the replacements and so there are going to be two names that will be presented at the July business meeting, and they've never been ordained. Um, but two men will take uh, the places of Bucky Allen and myself as chairman and vice chair. Bucky Allen will become chair September 1 of this year, and Tim Stewart will become the vice chair. Um, something that the board has already decided in preparation for later. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, be with us. Allow us to hear as believers what we're supposed to do that many times we ignore. Allow us to receive 
guidance and direction as believers from the Holy Spirit that sometimes doesn't have to prod us, actually have to stick us with a sharp instrument to pay attention. Be with those in our church. Help each person who is a believer, a Christian, to understand there are responsibilities. We're commanded. No suggestion. No afterthought. There are things that we are commanded to do. Amen. this time I'd ask our deacons to make their way forward as we go to uh, take place in the Lord's Supper.
Matthew 28, uh, verse 26 says this. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Fathers, we partake in this reminder of what your son, Jesus Christ, went through on that cross. I ask that this is not done out of tradition or ritual, but Father, this serves as a reminder of what you've done for us. That as believers, we can gather here this morning covered in grace, filled with the Holy Spirit because of Jesus Christ. I ask that that be on the forefront of our minds this morning. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen.
continuing in chapter 26. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink with me. Father, it is through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that we can come to you this morning. That on the cross he hung and took the wrath of God for my sin, for our sins. Father, I ask that that not be a mindless thought, that that not just be a natural assumption that we make, but Father, that, that the cross is always on our minds, and that it is on our minds heavily, that as believers we have been wrecked by the grace of Jesus Christ, that he would be willing to take the punishment for what was rightly ours. so that you may be glorified and that now we may come into a relationship with you. So Father, as we go to continue in worship, as we go to hear your word opened and, and, and preached, I ask that the cross be the foundation for why we do what we do and for why we say what we say. It is in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. I'd ask this time that the praise team would join me back up here. And if you would, stand with me as we go to continue in worship for just another moment. Or worship through song for just another moment. I'm going to wait for the words to get up here for everybody real quick. But if you would, join me as we uh, lift these lyrics to the Lord.
and suffer for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. All the chains. As we go to open your word, I ask that those words be true. Yet not, yet not I, but through Christ in me. That these words are not my own, but they are from your word. The Holy Spirit is in this place this morning, so Father, I ask that we recognize it. I ask that we open our eyes. I said you open our ears and soften our hearts to what may be said this morning. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. So with as many uh, guests as we have this morning, I want to take a minute to introduce myself. Um, my name is Zach Johnson. I'm the associate pastor here uh, for families and students, um, and I've been here for coming up on two years. Um, I'm not normally the face that you'd see here delivering the sermon. Uh, it's a short, uh, short bearded, bald guy. Um, but he had the awesome privilege uh, to go down with another church from his hometown down to the beach um, and be there uh, like weekend speaker I don't know if it's not camp I don't think but they're like they're weekend speakers so he, he got to preach four times over the last couple of days he's finishing up this morning um, and then he'll be on his way back and so what that did for me was that gave me the awesome opportunity um, to speak to you guys or to, to preach for you um, for God but to <laughs> preach not just one week for youth Sunday uh, but for two weeks back to back so I have the privilege of continuing where we left off last week in first Peter um, so if you, you can go ahead and open your Bibles up to 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to be in verses uh, 13 through 21. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to ask you guys a question, and, and some of you instantly it's just going to resonate, you're going to get it, um, and some of you will have no idea what I'm talking about. But, um, and it might target the moms a little bit more, most folks have their like go-to cleaner, Right? Like, for some of you, it's Dawn dish soap. Some of you, you just put baking soda on everything. Some of you, weirdly, it's toothpaste. For some of you, it might be if you pour some gasoline on it, put a rag right there and hold your face like this, it will take any stain out of whatever it may be. 
Um, I had a buddy of mine who spent a summer in Hawaii when we were in college, and the guy who was ha- uh, hosting them that, that summer, uh, his solution to everything was gasoline. He had a sore throat. He'd gargle gasoline. He had a cut on his arm. He'd pour gas on it. He had a stain on his shirt. He would throw gas on it. That doesn't take the stain out. It just made it bigger. It changed the whole color of the shirt. Um, but that was, that was like his thing. Um, but almost a year ago, coming right at, at a year ago, I got a, a puppy. Um, I did the really stupid thing of the day we finished camp. We loaded camp up. I came by the church, dropped everything off, and then drove to Richmond to pick up my dog. Don't do that. That was stupid. Um, and so I got this little puppy, and she, she was a hound mix, and her name is Piper. And she's a turd. She's just the biggest pain in the butt that you're ever going to meet. But uh, there are a lot of days with what I do and, and with Katie and everything that we're not home all day. And I, I hate just like leaving her in a kennel and knowing that she's going to be in there for 12 plus hours. And so my solution to that was to put a gate up that left her the whole kitchen to roam. All of her toys were there. Everything she wanted was in there. Um, apparently not everything she wanted. About four months ago, I knew one of these, one of these times was going to happen. And so we put the gate up, and we left her in there. And when I come home, I find that she had found a pin that somebody had left on a table. But uh, she had gotten a hold uh, of a pen, like an ink pen. And lo and behold, I was surprised by the lack of mess, but there's, there's ink splotches all over our carpet and my dog. Like face, just blue. Uh, she's white, so it really stands out. And I'm, I come home, and I'm like, this is the last thing that I want to deal with, but, but, you know, you can't let stain sit. So I start to clean the carpet, trying to get this pen ink out, and for the most part, it comes out, except for one spot. And I cleaned, and I cleaned, and I cleaned, I sprayed stuff on it, I left it overnight. Uh, I did everything that I could to remove this ink spot from our carpet, and nothing worked. Nothing. Katie came home. She did the same thing. She tried it for for like four days. And now on our carpet, instead of just having a little black dot, there's a little black dot with a ring around it of like really, really, really clean carpet. It it bleached our carpet. So now it's just this weird little black dot that's way more noticeable now. And if you haven't picked up where I'm going, it's like, you know, your typical Baptist, like very cliche. You have the same problem. You have, a, you have a black spot, if you do not know Christ, or had a black spot in your life that needed to be cleaned, and Dawn dish soap was not going to do it. You, ha- you had this issue, that, this, this problem that we called sin, and this problem of sin was not like, oh, I have this, this rash on my foot that just really it irritates me when I walk or when I sit. It wasn't like a bad hip. You had this problem of sin, and it made you dead. That you were born into death because of a sin that you committed against a holy God. And it was only through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that that sin can be cleaned. It is only through Jesus Christ that you can have that sin clean from you. And this cleaning that we want to look at this morning is not just a one-time response to who Jesus is. The Christian life is not, at eight years old, I walked an aisle in a VBS, and I said, yes, God, you get my life, and now I'm going to go do whatever else I want to do. The Christian life is a lifelong discipleship to Jesus Christ. The text that we're looking at this morning says, You shall be holy, for I am holy. We're going to dive into the whole thing in just a minute. But I wanted to point that out very briefly. You shall be holy, for I am holy. The cleaning that you are called to in Christ is not a one-time thing. Awesome, the blood of Jesus has redeemed me. 
Now let me put my filth back on because that's way more fun. The Christian life is, praise the Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed me. And knowing what I have been redeemed from, he gets my everything. So this morning, we're going to continue to look at the words of Peter that he writes to these exiled believers. And he is giving them a reminder of what Christ has done so that they are able to push through their persecution and suffering. And my goal this morning would be that in this text, in Scripture, you see Jesus so clearly that while you're not going through the persecution that the believers that Peter is writing to were experiencing, but that you would see Jesus in such a way that you would willingly go to persecution because you know who's holding you. So as we dive into the text this morning, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 21. Let's read. It says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who calls you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal and inherited, uh, from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. This morning I have these foundational truths that I hope not just help you see Jesus, but give you the next step of what your Christian, looks, of what your Christian life looks like. Because um, if you don't know this, statistics are pretty accurate. There's a reason that people like listen to statistics. There's a reason people do studies on statistics. Statistics tell me that there are people in this room this morning who have claimed Christ for their entire life and do not know Jesus. I'll say that again because if it's you, I want it to catch your attention. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm not saying this to anyone in particular. I'm saying this to an audience of many. Statistics are very clear. There are people in this room who claim Jesus Christ and do not actually know Jesus. There are also people in this room who know Jesus and are not giving him the glory and the title that he deserves. And then there are people in here who know Jesus and you've either known him for a little bit or you've known him for a long time. And you were diving in with him head first. He's got your everything. He's got your yes before he has even asked it. And this morning, my, my hope is that these um, foundational truths that we, that we look at go t- across the board. That if you do not know Jesus this morning, this is your calling to understand what it means to follow Christ. And if you don't know, if life is hard and you don't know where you are with your relationship with Christ, you feel like he is far away, that this is, your, is a call to come back. And if you're in a really, really great spot with Jesus, this is your call to continue to push forward. So point number one for this morning is that you are called to be holy. While this seems like a point that's right on the nose, um, I, I do want us to spend some time looking at some statements that are made from Peter here. Um, Peter makes a, a couple of different statements in the first, uh, first couple of verses here um, in this segment of 1 Peter. 
And, and he gives us two different ways or two different things that you are to do in relationship to holiness. Holiness is, is by far my favorite characteristic of God. In the, in the same way that um, Lee has talked about before that, that all sin is rooted in pride, I would, I would argue from Scripture that all of God's attributes are rooted in the fact that He is holy. Because God is holy, He is able to balance both justice and mercy. I don't know about any of you, but I, I, can't, I can't do that. Because God is holy, He is able to put a balance between wrath and love. And so as we talk about holiness, I want us to understand this morning that there is a weight to this characteristic of God, to this attribute of God. And as we go to dive into holiness, uh, you are called to be holy. If you're a note taker, here, I got like two sub points in here. Uh, you are to prepare to be holy. Peter begins in verse 13, he says, Therefore, therefore, anytime you see a therefore in Scripture or a but in Scripture, you need to back up. You need to figure out what was just being talked about that is now being mentioned in light of. And so as we looked at last week, Peter opens this, uh, this letter to the exiled believers in verses uh, 3 through 12, and he is talking about the living hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So you, as a believer, have a living hope in Jesus Christ. Therefore, because of who Christ is, you now need to prepare your minds for action. Holiness is not something that you just like slip into. Holiness isn't something that you just happen to be walking down a trail in the woods and you trip and you fall on it. Holiness is something that you must prepare for. You are a person living in a body that craves sin. And if you are a believer this morning, you have now been filled with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ which craves holiness and craves righteousness. You belong to him, and there are now two natures within you warring against the other. And you will act upon whichever one you feed. If you begin to feed your flesh, you should not be shocked when you act according to the flesh. But when you begin to feed your relationship with Christ, when you begin to uh, unite with the Holy Spirit that is in you, that is changing you and shaping you and giving witness to the world with your spirit, you shouldn't be shocked when you begin to act more like Jesus. Every, almost everybody in here has heard, somebody has heard somebody say the phrase, yeah, I don't know what that was. It, it wasn't me. Christ just did something cool. I've been, the first time that I ever got the opportunity to preach um, was at my, my, the church that I had grown up in. I was a sophomore in college, and the youth pastor who would come at and after my youth pastor um, was just a, a great mentor for me in terms of like what it meant to actually be a communicator. Um, and he gave me the opportunity to preach on a Sunday night, and it was the first time that I had ever done it. And um, shocker to no one, I preached out of Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10. Um, and I had it all written out, and I was like, great, this is going to be the fastest 15 minutes you've ever seen in your entire life. And I got done, and I, I got done, and I, I looked at a clock, and I, I didn't really know what had happened. At, most folks know me. I ramble at times. I talk a lot. Um, and so typically when I get up here with a sermon, there's way more that gets said than what's on the page. Um, that started real early. This less than 15 minute message ended up being 40 minutes. And I don't really know where it came from. 
things were brought to mind in the midst of preaching. Things were brought to my mouth of like, man, I didn't even know that I had that scripture memorized. Because that, that, wasn't, that wasn't me. That was the Holy Spirit moving through me. And it's, and it's an awesome feeling. Uh, most believers at some point or another have had that moment when you're talking with someone and they say something and you're able to go, whoa, that's, well, that's not really the way that works. You see, Jesus died for your sins and then you leave later and you're, you're just in awe of, I'm so scared all the time to evangelize, but that time it happens so naturally. When we begin to feed the Holy Spirit in our lives, we should not be shocked when we begin to look and act more like what Jesus calls us to act like. But it's not an accident. You have to prepare. If you are struggling with drunkenness, avoid alcohol. Someone who begins a, a, an, a, a, an AA meeting and starts wanting to remove this addiction from their life they don't go hang out in bars and think that they're going to be okay. If you're struggling with lust or with pornography or relationships that you know you shouldn't be in, avoid them. Throw your phone away. Break the computer. If you know that the flesh is calling you back, why would you continue to let the thing that leads you to sin be right there in hand's reach? Because Christ calls you to be holy. We must stop making excuses, stop enjoying the sin that we are living in, and actually prepare, be the soldiers that we are called to be, and put our feet on the ground and prepare to be holy. And there's another side to this, because that... I don't want you to think that I'm bashing you. If you're living in sin, you should probably feel like you're getting bashed a little bit. Not from me, from Scripture. But there's, a, there's another side to this. In being called to be holy, sub point, whatever you want to care, the next thing, you need to walk in what you are. Verse 16. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Peter doesn't say you should be holy, for I am holy, or like maybe you'll be. He said you shall be holy, for I am holy. Second, it's right there where if you have your Bible open, you can see this. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says this. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellency of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If you in this morning are a believer, Christ has already redeemed you. You are not walking towards holiness, trying to work your way towards redemption. You are walking towards holiness because you know what you've been redeemed from. And so you this morning, if you know Jesus Christ, you all are already redeemed. You are already justified. And one day you will be glorified, but right now you're in that funky middle part where you are being sanctified. You are being changed and shaped to look more like Christ. So in this call to be holy, this is not an impossible task. It's an impossible task alone, but you, you are no longer alone. The Holy Spirit within you is changing you to make you chase after holiness. I gave the example to the students this morning, and I've given it a couple times before. Um, but there's a reason why, the like, I think it's, I think it's Harry. Prince Harry, like, like two, three years ago, made it into the news as much as he did. Because he was being an idiot, right? But... But Prince Harry could go be an idiot like that, and Mark could go be an idiot in the same way. Sorry, Mark. And Mark could go be an idiot in the same way, and Mark's not going to make the tabloids. No one cares. Whoa, Mark Kinsler from Prince George, Virginia, man. He, he was just being a fool all over town. Like, like, what was he doing? Like, no one, no one cares, right? 
I mean, like, we would care. We'd come after you. But, like, the world at large does not care because he doesn't hold a title, right? Like, Prince Harry, like, no one just calls him Harry. They call him Prince Harry for a reason. He's a prince. The title of prince carries with it, like, a a responsibility, right? It carries a weight, The title of king or queen carries with it a weight. If you carry the title of prince, you are expected to act a certain way. How many of you guys have ever seen The Princess Diaries? Mia Thermopolis? Great movie if you've never seen it. The whole movie is they take this, this like, 18-year-old girl and turn her into a princess. That the way she was before, she was weird and awkward and couldn't walk in a straight line without tripping and they turn her into a princess because the title of prince or princess carries with it a weight but do you want to know something really cool even though prince harry was acting like a fool they still call him prince harry He was, he, was acting, he was doing all this mess. He was in the tabloids for months on months on months. He's still a prince. Whether in that moment he acts like it or not, whether in that moment he really remembers who he is or not, he is still a prince. For you, if you are a believer this morning, you need to walk in what you already are. A chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You have been brought from death to life and you have been made into something completely new. And in your new birth, Christ calls you to live a very particular life. Point two for this morning in obedience. You are called to live a holy life in obedience. We walk in holiness out of obedience to what God has called us, not in a begrudging obligation. And in the obedience that you walk in, you do not get to define it. God does. Scripture very clearly defines for us what holiness is. You do not get to openly celebrate non-heterosexual relationships. You do not get to openly celebrate people that are having intimate relationships outside of marriage. You do not get to celebrate abortion. You do not get to celebrate racism. You do not get to celebrate divorce or gluttony or lying. You do not get to celebrate sin all because you think that it's okay. You do not define holiness. If you did, you wouldn't be trusting in God to be changing you. If I defined holiness, I would make it whatever I wanted to be. So we have to understand that that when we talk about walking in holiness, it is holiness that Scripture commands us to. Not what we think that it may be. And you walk in holiness in this obedience out of the love that God has shown you. John 14, 15, Lee preached it a couple weeks ago. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I think we're on like week three in a row of Lee preaching through John 15 that this truth has been made very clearly evident to us from Jesus Christ that out of love for him, you walk in obedience. If you love him, you follow his word. If you love him, you have a desire to get to know him more deeply. Because if you know him, point three for this morning is a beautiful truth that you have the ability to rest in every moment of every day. Point three is that you were ransomed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And just so that you don't think it's from me, I want to read the scripture that shows it to us, verses 18 and 19. 
knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers. That's sin. You all inherited sin from your forefathers. But you have been ransomed with something. And this is, this is where Peter just is so beautiful. You have been ransomed, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. If you've been paying attention to the larger context of chapter of Peter, First uh, Peter chapter one, he's been making a, a sandwich, right? The first twelve verses, Peter is. This is who Jesus Christ is. He is your living hope. He lived the life that he lived so that God would get the glory and that you somehow get a benefit out of that. And then he continues on with, therefore, because Christ is our living hope, these are the things that you now do. And now he's coming on the, uh, the other side and putting the second piece of bread on the sandwich. And it's because the reason you continue to do these things is because you were ransomed with the most precious thing in all of human history, the blood of Jesus Christ. You inherited a sin nature from Adam and your forefathers, which in the presence of a holy God, you are dead. You deserved eternity in hell, completely separated from the Father. You deserved not even to step into his presence and to hear, to hear him say, leave me, you deserve to be obliterated from existence. You took a, a we as humans, we, we, there was a, a clean palate. God made this garden with Adam and Eve, and sin put black on the white. And God being holy could not be a part of it. And so he separated the two because he is still holy. And in your sin, you are not. And through Jesus Christ, he provided a way that we can turn from our sins, that we can repent from what we once walked in and call out to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. But here's the stipulation to what you have to do is this calling to prepare to be holy. You don't get Savior unless you also take Lord. You don't get the saving grace of Jesus Christ to then turn your back on him again and do whatever you want. <laughs> you get the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Go right up that way. You get the saving grace of Jesus Christ when you call him Lord. He's your master. He gets everything because he paid for you a price that can never be matched. We, we spend money on the things that we love, right? If you take take a woman shopping, then you know that, that there are things that she loves because money is spent. If, I, if I, me and Wyatt go to Zaxby's, I know that he really enjoys Zaxby's because he gets a lot of food. I don't know where he puts it all, but he gets a lot of food. You, you, you're willing to, to put, pay a price for the things that you love. And God the Father sent his Son and paid for us with his blood. And now we get to come into relationship with him. We, are, we do not come as just, as just servants or slaves. You are those things. But we do not just come as servants or slaves, but he calls us sons and daughters of the king. You didn't put that together. That makes you the prince or princess from earlier. That, like, that's what you now are. 
You have been redeemed with the blood of Jesus Christ for the purpose of making much of his name. It's to my groups from before, if you have a relationship with Christ right now, and it is great, and it is awesome, and you are walking with him so deeply, there, there is a lack of sin in your life because you have been feeding the Holy Spirit within you and you are walking in as close to a holiness as you can be. Be reminded this morning of the beauty of the blood that you were ransomed with. And if you're in group two, and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and just, it's slipping. I want to remind you this morning that you're not, that, that God's not the one who moved, you are. If you this morning feel far from God, it is because you moved, not Him. And what you need to do more than anything is remember the blood that you have been bought with. Remember the cross. Remember why we partake in the Lord's Supper. Why we remind ourselves of who He is. And you need to run to the Father. And if you're in our third group this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, whether you've never known Jesus Christ, or you, I mean, you've never known him if you don't know him now, but if you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, but you've claimed to for a long time, or if you're in this room and, and you just don't know who he is, the call this morning is very simple. Repent and believe the gospel. Turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ on the cross. The one who, who willingly went and gave his life so that you can come into relationship with God the Father. In conclusion, um, a sheep loves their shepherd. Because they've watched the shepherd protect them day in and day out. The sheep also knows that there are going to be things that the shepherd has to do that are going to hurt in a moment. But they know that the shepherd loves them so much that it's for their good. Cutting sin out from your life is not going to be a pleasant experience. Your body wants it. You want it. You have been feeding it for years. What you get when it's gone is worth everything that you've ever had. Let's pray. Father God, you are holy. There are angels in your presence crying those words out over and over and over again. So Father, as believers this morning, I ask and I pray that we understand just a little bit deeper of what it means to walk after you in holiness. <laughs> that, Father, I do not have to sit here and wonder if you are holy because you have never changed. Father, that as believers, we have the awesome knowledge to know that you are changing us and shaping us and making us look more like your son. For those in this room who, who do not know you, Father God, I ask that you would soften their hearts. 
I ask that you would open their eyes to see how beautiful you are. And for those in this room this morning who do know you, I would ask that you open their eyes to see your beauty in a whole new way. Father, we love you, but help us love you more. In your son's holy, holy, holy name we pray. Amen. If you would, stand with us as we go to have a time of response. If you need to uh, talk or ask questions or address anything, I'll be down here at the front um, during our hymn of response. pleasure to worship with you this morning. Um, if you are volunteering for VBS, we do have a meeting downstairs. And if you need any help uh, purchasing pictures for the directory, Mickey is out in the vestibule with her computer ready to help do that. Um, me and Mickey are the ones leading the meeting, so we'll be a touch late, but we'll meet you down there in a couple of minutes. But um, our Deacon of the Week is Hugh Mumford. He's going to come and pray for us as we go to uh, leave, and then we'll sing the doxology together. I haven't listened to his sermon yet. My wife will laugh at me. I have a middle child who's a pastor. And uh, two sermons that he had last two weeks, uh, I have not heard yet. Um, one, he embellished many of the uh, personal sayings I have. At nearly 80, I, I've got a few. Uh, one is, when in doubt, don't. I can go either way. Don't do something or don't fail to do something. If you see someone missing today, you need to make contact. Let us pray. Dear Lord, be with us as we leave. Allow us to take the message that has been shared because we choose to take it with us and use it.
not going to do any good if we just heard and we didn't listen. There are certain things that we are commanded to do. First of all, are you a believer? You have that choice. Be with us as we leave. Allow us to be the Christians that we should be. Allow us to hear what we need to hear. Amen.